Hey, this is Bente for CG Tuts, and in this tutorial we're going to be modeling this modern style spiral staircase. And uh, although this looks a little bit challenging, it's really not that complicated uh, to model if you know a few tricks, right? So the majority of this will be splines, but we'll also use a little bit of poly modeling. Okay, so I'll be using 3D Studio Max 9 for this, and if you have that version or another version, uh, you shouldn't have any problems following this tutorial. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is start out by modeling one of the steps and one of the posts. Then we'll look at a way we can uh, clone and position that into the spiral shape that we need. And with that done, we'll move on to the uh, railings and railing details. And then I'll show you how to cut a hole out in the uh, floor up here so that the staircase can pass through that. And with that done, we'll move on to the top section and do the railings up here. And the final things we'll do is just make a couple of... Uh, adjustments and tweaks and then we'll look at ways to uh, attach some of this stuff together. Okay so these are a few screenshots down here of this tutorial and let's jump into Max and get started. Okay so here we are in Max and the first thing we're going to do is just open up an image that we can use as a reference. So I'm just going to go into the utilities tab and click the asset browser and then we'll open up our image here and I'll include a link of where you can download uh, this uh, particular one if you want to follow along. And this is actually just one of my own renders. Uh, I did the model probably a couple years ago. So we'll just rebuild it and I've come up with a couple of uh, better techniques to do it since I built this one. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is start with the center pole and then we'll start working on the stairs. Alright, so I'm just going to go into the top view here and I'll turn off the grids with G. Then we're just going to go into the uh, create panel and grab a cylinder, and we'll just drag that out and give it a little bit of height. All right, and the first thing we're going to do is just center it to the world, so let's right click on the move tool and we'll zero out the X and Y spinners. And you can zero those out by right clicking on the spinners. Okay, so we'll close that. And we'll figure out the radius that we need here. And I'm just going to turn off the selection brackets with J and turn on my edge faces with F4. Okay. All right, let's go with say 13 or so on the radius and I think we'll do about 500 or so for the height. We'll see how that looks. Yeah, I think that'll be good for starters. And I'm just using generic max units over here. And you can check to see what uh, kind of units you're using if you go up to customize and down to the uh, unit setup here. All right, and it's just on generic, which is the default for Max. Okay, so I'm just going to be using that. And uh, we'll also take off the height segments here. We don't really need those. And we'll just leave it at one cap segment with 18 sides. And we can adjust the height later on if we need to. All right. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to convert this to Edible Poly. And I'm just going to name it something like Main Pole or something like that, just so we know what it is. Alright, so let's jump into the top view here, we'll zoom in a bit on this, and then let's start working on the stair. So let's go into the create panel and we'll grab a box, alright, we're just going to drag that out, and we'll figure out the size in a second. So let me change the color of this uh, pole here so we can see it. Alright, so we'll reselect the stair. And we'll go into the modify panel here and let's see. Let's uh, do about 30 or so for the length. And let's do maybe 140 for the width. And we'll just do 5 or so for the height. And we'll just leave these at uh, one segment each way. Okay. And let's center this. So we'll go up and right click the move tool and we're just going to zero out the Y spinner. Okay. Just so it's centered to the uh, center pillar here. Okay. Close that. Okay, and I think that should be uh, a good size to start with. So we'll go back into the top view here and we'll right click and convert this to edible poly. And let's go into edge and we'll just uh, grab these edges here. And let's do a connect on that. And let's do maybe four segments, uh, no pinch, no slide, and okay. 
And then we're going to go into vertex, and we just want to round the end of this out a bit. Okay, so we'll grab these middle verts here, and we'll just pull those over. And these ones, maybe a little bit more. All right, something like that, just round it out a bit. And we'll do the same thing on this end. Okay, maybe something like that. And we'll just move this slightly uh, to the right. Right. Okay. And let's go back into vertex here and we'll grab these end ones here. And make sure you have ignore back facing turned off when you do that. We're just going to go up to scale and we'll just scale this out on the Y axis. Right. Something like that maybe. And we'll grab these ones at this end and we'll just slightly scale these in just a bit. Okay, just like that. We'll see how that looks. And let me just uh, put a standard gray shader on this uh, center pillar so we can see it. Okay. Okay. We might actually be able to bring this out a bit more at this end. Okay, something like that maybe is a little bit better. Right, and now we're gonna add uh, some support edges because we're gonna have to turbo smooth this uh, to get the uh, the fostening out of there. Okay, so we'll just select all these edges here and let's do a connect on those, and we'll do two segments, and we'll just pinch those apart, and we want them pretty close to the end. So let's do say 97 or so maybe. Let's do 98 actually, and okay. And then we'll select these two edges here and we'll do a ring on those and a connect. And we'll just do one segment this way. No pinch. And let's see, let's slide that up a bit. And I'm just going to worry about uh, getting the back here where we want it. And then we can move these verts up to even out the support edge. Alright, so let's do maybe about negative 50 or so on the slide. And OK. And we'll do the same thing with these ones down here. Do a ring on those edges and a connect and OK. Then we'll go into vertex here. Let's just grab these verts here. And I'm also going to go down here and put edge constraint on. OK. And that's just so we can't pull them out of uh, alignment. All right. So we'll just slide that down and even this out. We'll do the same thing down here with these two. Just pull those down a bit. OK, something like that. And if you ever get a, a weird shading problem like this where uh, it looks completely screwed up, uh, just go in and put a, a smooth modifier on it and just leave that the default settings, don't check anything off. And then just uh, right click and collapse it back to, uh, at a poly and that should fix the problem. Okay, so let's uh, go back into edge here and let me change the color of this. Let's grab an edge on the corner here and do a ring. And we'll add two uh, segments this way with a connect. We'll just pinch those up a bit. Let's do about 40 or so on the pinch. And OK. And let's put a turbo smooth on and see how this looks. And we'll do two iterations and ice line display. OK. And you can see here. It's a little bit sharp, so let's go into the top view and zoom in on this end. All right, and I'm going to drop back down into Edible Poly, and we'll go to Vertex, and then we'll turn on the Show and Resolve button so we can see it subdivided. Okay, now let's just select these eight verts here and these eight, and we're just going to pull those forward a bit just to round this out a bit better. Okay, something like that maybe. And we'll see how that looks. Let's actually move all of these ones here just back a slight bit. And the center ones, just to make that a little bit smoother of a curve. Okay. 
and then we'll move the whole thing forward just slightly. All right. So just like that. And let's also uh, turn off the show and result button. We'll go back into edge here. Let's just drag through the middle edges. Okay, just all the center ones. And we're just going to add a couple of extra segments here just to uh, break these polygons up a bit because they're so long. All right, so we'll do two segments with no pinch or slide and OK. And I'll just help us with the turbo smooth a bit, make it look a little bit smoother. Right? So that looks pretty good and it needs to be a little bit thicker. So let's go into the uh, front view here and we'll go up to scale and we're just going to scale this up on the Y just to make it a little bit thicker. All right. Maybe something like that. Okay. And let's also name this, and we'll just call this something like Step 01. Okay, and I'm going to uh, just put a black wire color on there, and I'll put the gray uh, standard shader on there. Okay, and that's just a personal preference for me. I uh, just prefer to uh, look at stuff this way. Um, if you don't like to, then uh, you can do whatever you like, or you could just uh, leave it with the default colors. All right. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is just model one of these posts. All right. So let's go into the top view. And we'll go into the create panel. And let's grab a cylinder. And we'll just drag this out down here and give it a little bit of height. All right. And let's just figure out how big this needs to be. Let's give it a radius of, say, 2. And we'll take the height up. And let's do, say, 150 or so for the height. Okay. And I think that looks about the right size. All right, and don't worry about the height segments or anything. We're actually just going to use this as a template. All right, so let's uh, move this up slightly in the front view. We'll just bring that up and leave it intersecting the stair just a slight bit, okay, because we don't want to have a gap underneath there. So just like that. Right, and now let's go into the shapes, and we're going to grab a line, and let's just drag that out from the top of the cylinder, and we'll hold shift and I'll snap it to uh, 90 degrees straight for you. All right, so just hold shift and bring it down to the bottom of the cylinder, and then we'll click, then right click to end. Okay, and the only reason I started with a cylinder here instead of just doing it uh, out of the line was just so I could get a uh, specific uh, height amount, okay? So let's go into the modify panel here and under the rendering tab we're going to click off enable and render and enable and viewport and I'll make that spline renderable for us. Okay. So let's go into the top view and let me just change the color of this one here so you can see it. Okay, let's take our spline here and we're just going to move that to the center of the cylinder. All right. And we're going to take the thickness up just to match that. So let's do about 4 or so for the thickness. All right. And then we'll select the cylinder in there behind that. And we'll just delete that. All right, so we just have the spline left. And we'll also take the sides up from 12 to, say, 25 or so, so that it's uh, perfectly round and smooth. All right, and let's just move this over, and we'll line it up just between these two edges here. Okay, just touching this one and this one, like that. Alright, and let's also go up and we'll name this post 01, just to keep things organized. And I'll just put that black color on there. And that gray shader. Alright. So with that done, let's select the post and the stair. And we're going to go up to group, and we're just going to group these as, say, step 01. Okay, and this will just make it easier for us to do our copies if they're uh, grouped together. Alright, so let's go into the top view again. And we'll go into the hierarchy tab. And we'll hit effect pivot only. And we'll right click the move tool and we'll zero out the X and Y spinners. 
just so the pivot point of our group is centered with the uh, our uh, main post here. All right. So we'll close that and turn the button back off. And I'm just going to jump into the front view here. All right. And there's a lot of ways that we could uh, copy this piece around and get it into the spiral shape that we need. Um, but a lot of times I find that it's just easier to do this kind of thing manually rather than using the spacing tool or something like a path constraint. All right. So with our group selected here, let's just hold shift and we'll just go drag up on the Y. All right. We just want to figure out our space in between each stair here. Let's do something like that maybe. Okay. And then we'll choose copy here and we're going to need about 15 or so of these. All right. So we'll put 15 in there and hit okay. And that'll give us all of our stair copies. And obviously we can't uh, do much with it like this. So we need to position these in the spiral pattern. Okay. So let's go into the front view. And I'm going to select all the stairs besides the bottom one. Okay. So all 15 of the stairs. And uh, leave the bottom one unselected as well as the uh, center pillar here. Alright. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit in the top view. All right. Then we're going to go up to rotate and we're going to go and put on rotation snaps and that'll let you rotate in even increments of five degrees. All right. And if your, if your pivot point doesn't, isn't centered right here when you're on rotate, if it's over here somewhere, just uh, go into the modify panel, uh, click on effect pivot only, and then hit align to world and that should center it uh, to the uh, center of the pillar for you. Okay. Which is where we need it to be to make this work. Right, and as I rotate this, you can see down here at the bottom in the Z how many uh, degrees I'm rotating. All right, so with these 15 groups selected, we're going to just going to rotate, and I'm going to do that about 30 degrees. Okay, and then we'll let go. And I'm just going to hold Alt and deselect the bottom stair, and then we'll rotate these another 30 degrees. Okay, and then deselect one, and then we'll rotate again. And I'm just going to repeat this process until we get to the top. And this will give us a perfect result at the end. It's a little tedious to do, but it'll be worth it. All right, so just keep rotating 30 degrees and deselect the bottom stair, and then just keep going. and last one and okay all right so there we go and you can see we're a little bit short on the center post here so let's just move that up so I'll go into the front view and let's select the center uh, pillar and let's we'll go into the modify panel and into vertex we'll just grab the top verts and move these up and we'll just push that into the top stair just a little bit. Okay, and obviously we need a bit of a, a gap here between the first stair and the floor, so let's grab the bottom verts. And we'll just pull those straight down. Alright, and try to get uh, an even gap between the where the floor will be and the bottom st uh, stair, just like these ones here. Okay, so something like that. And we'll just check to make sure everything's lined up in the center. Okay, that looks good. So the next thing we'll do is start working on the railings. And um, we're also going to do these out of splines. And there's a lot of ways we could uh, make this as well. Um, when I first modeled this one here, I believe I used a helix spline for the railings, and uh, that'll work, but it's kind of uh, time consuming to get everything lined up the way you want with your posts and everything. Okay, so we're going to do this a little bit of a weird way. All right, so let's uh, go into the top view, 
I'm just going to zoom out a bit on this. And then we'll go back into the create panel and we'll grab another line. And we're just going to drag that out. Alright, and it doesn't matter how long it is. We'll also turn off these two checkboxes here. Alright. And let's go into the modify panel and we'll drop this down into the vertex. And we'll go down here to refine. Okay, we're just going to add a bunch of verts into this uh, spline here, okay? So just click a bunch in there. And it doesn't matter if they're evenly spaced or not. Alright, just put a bunch in, probably like 15 or 20 or so. Okay. And then we'll turn the refine button off. And I'm going to select all the verts on the line. And I'm going to right click on one of them and set it to smooth, okay? And then we'll get out of vertex for a second. And let's just move our line up to the top, okay? And I'm going to do this in this perspective view. Let's just move this a little bit closer maybe. All right. So what we're going to do here is go back into vertex. Actually, before we do that, let's uh, hit H on the keyboard to open up the uh, objects list. And you can also do that with this icon up at the top here. Okay, we'll select all of our groups for our stars. Okay, select those. And then we're just going to go up to group and we're going to ungroup those. Okay, just break them apart. Right. Then we'll reselect our spline here and we'll go into vertex and I'm going to go up to snaps and if you right click on that uh, just check off vertex and make sure everything else is unchecked. Okay. So we'll close that and we'll turn snaps on. All right. So we're going to start over at this end with the first vert here. All right. And I'm just going to click on that and I'm going to drag it over to the uh, first post and you'll see that'll snap to that, which is what we want. Okay, so we'll let go right there and I'll snap that vert right on top of the uh, vert for the post. And that's the reason why I did the posts out of a line rather than a uh, cylinder, is so that it only have one vert at the top rather than 18 if it was a cylinder. Okay, so we'll snap that one there and then we'll go up and get the next vert in our line and drag that over and snap it to the second post. Okay. And we're just going to repeat this process all the way down. Okay. And don't worry if the line looks like it's uh, going weird or something like that. Uh, it'll be fine. Just uh, leave it. All right. So we'll just keep going here. Snappanese teach post on the way down the stairs. And I know this is a little weird to look at, but uh, just take your time and work from the top to the bottom. Oops. Okay, almost there. Okay, and that's the last one. Alright, so we'll just go up here and we'll select the rest of the verts in that line and we'll just delete those. Okay, and as you can see that uh, will give us a perfectly uh, positioned uh, spline that we can use for our railing. Alright. So now we'll turn off snaps and we'll get out of vertex. And we'll go up to the top here and we'll check these both off again. Okay. All right, and as you can see, that's a perfect uh, railing. But it does need to be a little bit thicker, so we'll take the thickness up to say about six. Okay. And I think that looks about right. All right, and one more thing we're going to do is just center the pivot point uh, to the uh, object so it's not sticking off to the side there. All right, so we'll go to the hierarchy tab. Uh, click on effect pivot only and we'll just hit center to object and OK. Alright, so the next thing we'll do is just uh, use this piece to create the railing details here. And because it's already shaped to the post, it'll uh, 
make this easy for us to do. All right, so we'll go to the front view and zoom in. And I'm just going to hold shift and drag down on the Y again. Okay, something like that. And we'll choose copy. We're just going to do one for a second. So hit OK. And then we'll go back into the modify panel and we're going to change the thickness to say about two. Okay. All right, just like that. So now we can make the rest of our copies. So we'll hold shift again and drag down on the Y. And we'll do something like that maybe. And she's copy and we'll do five of these. And OK. Great, and that'll give us our uh, railing details. And as you can see, everything's uh, perfectly aligned with our posts, which makes this a lot easier. OK. So let's also select everything here and we'll just uh, put that gray shader on there. And I'm going to make this a little bit more white. Okay. So the next thing we'll do is just uh, put a temporary floor in here and I'll show you how to cut the hole out. Uh, all right, and you can just replace that if you're actually doing this model for an interior of Sears Hub. You can just replace this piece with your actual floor and cut the hole the same way. All right, so we'll go into the top view and let's go into the create panel and we'll grab a box and let's just drag that out. Okay, and we'll give it a little bit of height and let's see, let's just do this, say, maybe 700 by 700 and we'll do something like uh, 20 or so for the height maybe. And let's also center it on X and Y. Okay. And in the left view here, we'll just move this up. All right. And I'm just going to line it up with our um, the bottom of this box with the bottom of our top stair here. Okay. All right. And let's right click and we'll convert this to edible poly. And we'll go into edge. And we're going to need to add some support edges because we're going to need to turbo smooth this piece for our hole to be uh, round. Okay, so we'll select these four edges here and we'll do a connect with two segments and we'll pinch those out. Let's do something like 98 or so on the pinch and OK. And let's add some this way. So we'll select those edges and connect that. And let's also cut this up a bit more. So let's grab these edges here. And we'll do a connect that way. And let's do three segments, no pinch or slide. And OK. And the same thing this way. Just connect that again. OK, so just like that. And uh, just to make this easier to work on, let's actually just delete the bottom of it so we just have a plane left. And I'll save us having to cut the hole uh, twice. OK, so we'll go into vertex and we'll just drag through the bottom verts and delete them. Alright, so we just have the plane left. And then we'll go back into the top view. Let's zoom in a bit on the hole. And let's go into the shapes and grab a circle. And we'll drag that out from the center. Alright, and we'll just bring this out a little bit uh, bigger in radius than our staircase. Okay, so something like that. And let's also untick these boxes. And for the radius on this, let's do say 145. Okay, and we'll also center it on X and Y. Right. And let's also go down to interpolation and we'll take the steps down to one. All right. And it'll give us a octagon shape, which is what we want to cut the holes. Okay, so we'll change the color of that to say black. All right, and I'm just gonna hold control and click on the floor. All right, so we just have the circle on the floor selected and we'll just right click and hide unselect it. Okay, just to make this a little bit easier to see. All right, so let's reselect our circle. All right, and let's see, that looks like it's okay. All right, so we'll select our floor here and we're gonna go down to cut and then we're gonna turn on snaps. All right, and we're just gonna use this as a template to cut the shape out in our floor. And if you've done any of my other tutorials, you'll know this is a, a common way that I I cut holes and things. Okay, 
So we'll start at the top here and we'll just trace around the circle, clicking on each corner. And we'll finish on the top one and then right click to end. We can turn off cut and we'll turn off snaps. Then we'll hit H and select our circle and we can just delete that. We don't need that anymore. Okay. And I'm just going to go into vertex here and I'm just going to drag through these verts. And I'm just going to do a weld, a 0.1 weld, just to make sure everything's welded up there. All right. Occasionally you'll, uh, even with snaps on, it won't cut right to the vert. So you'll have two right next to each other, which can give you a problem. All right. All right, so now we need to make this quads. So let's select these two verts up here and we'll do a connect and we'll select these two and do a connect and the same thing at these bottom ones. Connect those and finally these two. All right, so now we have quads and now we'll go to polygon and we'll select the four polys for the hole and we're gonna do an inset on those and we'll do that say about two or so on the amount and okay and I'll just give us a inside support edge okay so with that then we can actually delete the polygons and we'll get out a polygon and that's what we have okay so now we can just put a shell modifier on this and we'll do the inner amount of about 20 and we'll do the outer amount of 0 okay and that'll give us the uh, thickness of our original box Okay, so with that done, we can right click and collapse this down to edible pulley. And then we'll go into edge and we'll just add a couple support edges on the outside here. Alright, so we'll select that corner edge and ring and connect. And we'll do two uh, segments. Let's just pinch those up a bit. Let's do about 65 or so on that. And OK. And then we'll add a couple on the inside of the hole here. So let's grab one of these edges and do a ring and a connect. And let's take the pinch up a bit. Let's do about 80 or so on that. And OK. All right. And now we can put a turbo smooth on here. And we'll do two iterations and ice line. OK. And we can also change the color to black and put that uh, gray shader on there. All right. And now we'll just right click and unhide all. And we'll see how this looks. Okay, railing seems to be clearing uh, the hole fine. Okay. So that looks pretty good there. And let's also name this piece floor. Okay. So the next part we'll start on will be the top railing uh, detail here.